Welcome to Curious Tech, and this is Gerard. I was able to get my hands on some surplus enterprise servers. So what I'm going to do is walk you through one of the two servers. Um, they're identically specced, um, and just show you it physically. What does it look like? Um, what does it look like on the front? What does it look like on the back? Um, what are the specs for the server? And then from there, uh, in future videos, you'll see how I spin this up, particularly uh, to bolster my virtual machine environment here in the lab. So this is the server. It is specced out, with fully specced out with drives here. Um, it's got a CD drive here as well, two USBs, serial cable here. Um, the first two drives are regular SATA 120 gig SSDs. So that would be kind of like an OS or, or boot drive you could put in like RAID 1. Um, in addition to that, all the remaining 17 drives are um, some Seagate 10Ks. So 10K spinners that you can put in a pretty good array. You should be able to get pretty good IOPS with that with so many disks spread across from one another. And they are all populated, which is very nice. Since this is an enterprise server, it has dual PSUs, so two different power supplies here. Um, in addition to that, we've got some onboard NICs with SFP cages, so one gigabit NICs. Um, there's a management port as well. Um, in addition to that, this is a, a super micro platform. So they have a um, onboard computer um, that as long as the system is powered and is networked, you can do a virtual KVM and things of that nature. So it's a pretty nice platform. Um, it, since it is an older platform, it's a dual socket Xeon. It's running, uh, I believe, 2695 V2 Xeons. So I think those are 12 cores by default, 24 hundred or or 2.4 gigahertz 2.4 gigahertz cpus um, with turbo boosting up to 3.2 gigahertz um, so not bad um, it's it's not a modern cpu so those are a, a fair bit dated but plenty beefy for my use cases bam easy all right so behind the hard drives, you've got four big fans, and you've got a plastic airflow um, cover. So this is to help get the airflow through these giant heat sinks on top of these Xeons. Um, also, this is a big capacitor in here, or a big battery. So the other drives, those 14 drives were, that were 10K spinners, those are SAS drives. What you see is a a battery pack here and this battery pack actually connects up to the SAS controller um, and so you have the ability to do hardware raid right here on the platform or to turn this into essentially JBOD or just a, just a bunch of disks and pass all of those drives up to the operating system. Um, right now it's configured for 256 gigs of memory so 128 gigs per CPU. This is the Intel Xeon processor E2695V2. Um, it's 12 cores, 24 threads, uh, 30 megs of cache. It's not the fastest processor uh, with 2.4 gigahertz, so it's single core CPU is not very fast even for its time. Uh, you know. And beyond that, you know, comparing to current day processors, its single core performance is pretty slow. However, that kind of density gives a lot of capacity. So this is the super micro board that we, that we were looking at. Uh, it has a riser card that sits in on that left side. So that's that long riser cord that exposes four PCI Express slots. That's what the RAID controller is plugged into. The, the board also has a bunch of IO on it. So it has um, onboard the IPMI that I was mentioning, but it also has onboard serial ATA and SAS ports. Uh, earlier I mentioned um, four one gig ports, one with SFP cages and one with uh, RJ45, but it's actually 10 gig ports, uh, which is really nice. Uh, I'm gonna have, since I have two of these boxes, I'm gonna have a direct attached 10 gig network between the two, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's about it. Pretty cool platform, lots of disk drives, 
plenty you can do with it. If you like what you saw here today, please hit the like and subscribe button. And stay tuned for more content. Curious Tech out.